Hi everyone, Steve here from Learning As I Draw. This is just going to be a quick tutorial or tips video aimed more so at beginners on painting realistic skin. So we're going to look into things such as colour choice, shading and certain imperfections that make the skin look more realistic. So I'm going to start just by creating a new layer and selecting the rectangle marquee tool and just drag out a shape. So we're going to paint within this. Whilst you've got this shape here, you can only paint within this. So I'm going to start by picking a skin type colour doesn't have to be too accurate straight away because you can uh, sort of play around with this later on. I sort of go somewhere between a red and an orange, um, quite high towards the top, so it's quite light and quite desaturated. And I'm just going to fill this in, like so. And before I show you how I would actually paint skin, I'm going to show you one thing that I would avoid doing which is when shading something, um, for the sake of this we're going to say this is like a tube, like a pipe shape, a cylinder. I'm going to use a soft brush just because it saves time in, in this case. So most people would think maybe get a black, shade it like so, something like that. And then maybe use a white to highlight that. Um, you can see straight away it doesn't really look right, it looks pretty awful if we've been honest. So that is not something you want to do, so avoid just shading it just with black and you know lighting it just with white. Okay, so I'm going to stick lock transparent pixels on just so that we can't paint outside the lines. And I shouldn't have really uh, got rid of the colour so I could keep it the same to show you but this will do. So as I mentioned earlier, some people might like to um, work in their colours by actually setting the transparency quite low, colour picking and doing it like this which is a very long process but it, it can look very painterly and it's a preferred method. Um, seeing as this, I don't want this tutorial to last way too long, I am just going to use a soft brush, something like this just so that it blends quicker. It might not be your preferred brush, but um, it'll make sure that the tutorial doesn't end up lasting ages. So the brush I'm going to use is this third one along. This is in Photoshop CS6. And this one, I think the pen pressure affects the opacity of it. So you can see the harder you hold it in compared to the lighter you hold it in. I also keep this button on up here, which is basically the same thing. Right, so we know not to use a black to shade it. So what do you use? Well, there's no exact colour to use for skin because so many things can affect it. Um, you know, the environment and the lighting, for example. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go with red and quite a dark red. I like to go fairly saturated, um, but with a little bit of black in there as well. Now, the reason I do this is just because this is sort of my go-to shading colour for skin. Just from doing certain skin studies, this seems to be the sort of the most frequent colour that ends up being used. And also, I think because of the blood underneath the skin, um, the red is more visible sometimes. So once you've selected a colour that you want, again, you can change this later on, so don't worry too much about it. Pick that soft brush, and what I'm going to do is, in the brush settings, I'm going to turn on noise, and you can see the preview down here. And what noise does is it just turns on these speckled bits around the edge which you can see, hopefully you're watching this in high quality so you can see that and it's almost like skin pause which could save you a step later on alternatively you could use any brush and then add skin pause later on so I'm just going to assume that the lighting is coming from over here let's say I'm just going to add in my shadow areas where the light's not hitting as much and a little bit of this side I'm just going to blend this a little bit and hopefully you can see already how that already looks more like realistic skin in comparison with just using black. To make it more realistic you would actually get a little bit of bounce light on this back bit where light is for example coming from this direction, bouncing off a wall or the floor and just catching the edges here. Just a little bit like so. And I'm going to have this area here where the light is hitting, I'm going to have some highlights on there. I, I like to go with a yellow for this and very bright so it's almost white and just very gently run out in like so. Now because we've been using this brush that's got noise on, 
you, you can see as long as you're watching this in HD, you'll be able to see the sort of specular effect. If if you didn't use a brush like this, that's fine. Um, I think actually you can download skin brushes from pretty much anywhere, um, or even make your own, and it's just something like this. But obviously you could do that on a new layer and then turn the opacity down. I'm not going to bother with that for this tutorial though. So I'm going to paint in some perfections now, some little spots and things. And this really makes a difference between a cartoony and a realistic skin painting. So I'm going to pick this third hard brush along, which I believe is pressure sensitive to how hard you press again. Yep. And I'm going to select a brown. I'm just going to dot these in randomly. In fact, I'm going to switch my brush so that the pen pressure affects the size of it. And I'm going to turn the opacity down. So just placing them randomly, uh, getting them all different sizes. You would see these more around the sort of half tone area between the light and the shadow, so probably less in this area here. Uh, I wouldn't put them in the actual highlight either, but I would put them sort of around there where you can see the most detail. Like that. Now you could put as, you could put as much as you want in, but sometimes less is more. And now I'm just going to try and make this a little more realistic by adding some hair in. You could do this a lot of different ways, but I'm going to try using the burn tool. Uh, it doesn't really matter what brush you use for this. And basically the burn tool will just make it darker than the colour below. And we're just going to dot in some hairs randomly. Now, I am rushing this a bit because I don't want the tutorial to be too long. So please do spend a bit more time than I'm doing. And I'm not making these too defined, I'm doing them with uh, sort of the opacity quite low. So you can barely see them, but you still pick up on them and it does make quite a big difference. And in this highlight area here, I'm actually going to switch to a white. Now, I wouldn't advise normally using white, but um, with the, the opacity being so low, it's not actually going to come out white anyway. And I'm going to switch to a opacity sensitive like this so this would be where the lights actually hitting certain hairs uh, and mean you know do some observation from life as well you know set up some lighting and maybe look at your arm let's say this was your arm for example and you probably notice some hairs appear to be white in some areas So something like that. I think I'll actually pull some of these hairs off off the arm or off the tube, whatever you want to refer to this as, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. So something like that would be much better so you can, I mean you can see in comparison between the two you can see straight away that well hopefully you think that this first one looks a lot more realistic and just better in every way <laughs> than this second one now if you wanted it to be even more realistic you would actually desaturate it so the color would not be as strong and to do that if you're on the right layer you can hold down control and U on your keyboard to bring up this hue and saturation now to desaturate it, you can literally just drag this down a little bit. And if you wanted to adjust the colour at all, you could play around with it here if you wanted it more sort of yellowy orange or if you wanted it more red. Like that. I usually prefer to have mine a little bit more saturated, but it's not quite as realistic. And obviously that is just a tube, so you might want to just... I'll just quickly turn this into something so it looks even more realistic. I'm just going to use the warp tool. Maybe something like that so that it looks like, I don't know, part of a forearm, uh, maybe even part of a leg. I'm not sure <laughs> whatever you want to think of it as. Obviously, if you are going to try this, spend a little bit more time than I have. Um, I just didn't want the tutorial to go on for hours or anything.
but even sort of simplifying it and doing it quickly that like that, I think it does still give a fairly realistic skin tone. Bear in mind, this isn't the specific way to paint skin. This is just one method of doing it. This is just what, what I've found helpful. I would advise doing some skin studies yourself uh, from, from real life and from photos and seeing what you come up with. So nothing is set in stone, but hopefully this just gives you a little bit of guidance um, where to start with your pieces if it's something that you're struggling with. Because I know when I first started digital painting, I was always looking for sort of tutorials on painting realistic skin and it was something I really struggled to find. And I've still got a lot on this topic to learn as well, but hopefully this will help some of you out. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscription button at the bottom of the screen. You can also see some of my other videos by clicking the video links on screen now. Links to my Facebook and DeviantArt can be found in the description box. Thanks for watching.